Hey there, everybody. Welcome. I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, so shout out to everybody. We're going to get started with this cat. Um, and before we get started, um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you all as a community um, to, I'd like to start uh, getting some additional feedback about subjects to, to work on, things that you might find interesting to draw. Um, one of the things that's challenging, though, is in this chat, um, going back through and finding it. So once this has gone live, um, it goes up as a recording. So if you're watching this as a recording, if you could post your suggestions in that chat field of the of the recording, that would be awesome. I'd love to hear what you all would like to see um, me work on. So we're going to keep this going for quite a while, at least to the end of this month and probably into next month. We're just going to keep rolling with this. So I'm, I, I would love to work on some of your suggestions. So again, once the, the recording goes up after the live event, if you want to drop that into the chat field there, that would be fantastic because I'll be able to monitor that more. Monitor that more effectively. So welcome everybody. Um, I want to jump into it as quickly as possible. We have uh, this cat named Odin. That's his name. We also refer to him as Mega Floof. So I want to shout out to Little Mitt's Ragdolls, a cat from there, a good friend. So um, there's a link in the description um, to both this photo and if you want to see an endless supply of cuteness follow them on, on Instagram. So um, <clears throat> also check out artistnetwork.com. If you go to the drawing together um, uh, uh, the page on the site, so at the, when you go to artistnetwork.com, at the top you'll see drawing together. You're going to find additional resources there as well as links to individual show pages that we created where people can upload um, your drawings. So if you'd like to upload them, share them and share your experiences there, check that out. So um, <clears throat> today we're working on this toned paper, this is just toned drawing paper. Um, I'm working with compressed charcoal. That's something I don't think I've really worked with so far in this series. So I've got charcoal pencils, compressed charcoal, vine charcoal. I've got my two erasers, my kneaded eraser, my rubber eraser, my shading stump. I've actually got two of them. And this is white, uh, white charcoal actually right here. Um, I do have a white um, chalk pencil that I might need to, to grab as well. So these are the materials I'm working with. Again, they're in the description along with the photo if you want to follow along. Um, so we're going to get started. And one of the reasons I chose to work on the toned paper is that this particular photo is all about light. So looking at this, it's really about this kind of halo of light that helps me to understand the texture of the fur more effectively. Um, and within that, we see this bright light transitioning into this area of shadow. So there's a lot of shadow going on in here. Um, there's a dark background, of course. Um, and by working on the toned paper, it already gets me um, uh, pretty far along in terms of getting that value. So I'm starting with a darker value, and then I'm, I'll be able to make them even darker in certain areas, and then add the white to get those highlights. It also provides a nice warmth to it that looking in the photo, there's some warm, warmth to the fur that I think will contrast nicely with the charcoal. And I'm adding the compressed charcoal because it really adds a softness to it um, that's, that's essential for this. Um, so to get started, uh, as we always do here, I'm just gonna start to work out the basic form of, uh, of Odin here. I'm trying to figure out how I wanna place it on the page. And this is really, again, all about just kind of thinking through some of the major shapes, getting information on the page so then I have something to react to and make adjustments on as we go. And building up tone on the page using the vine charcoal, which is really soft. If you have any questions throughout the process, feel free to shout it out. If you're watching the recording, um, I, yeah, I do check that feed, so if you're trying to follow along from the recording, um, I'm happy to uh, answer questions there as well. Um, and, and the thing about texture that I, I want to kind of talk about is that it's um, <clears throat> similar to what we, we worked with last session with the hair. A lot of it is about allowing the materials to kind of do their thing rather than really trying to fight them and force them to do uh, do something, you know, like, uh, force them into creating the texture. We almost, sometimes almost over-render them. So uh, what we're doing is kind of building up this field and at the very end we'll add just a few fine details that will make the whole thing pop. Okay, so Mary is asking a question about the difference between the vine charcoal and the compressed charcoal. Well, there are different material 
in, in general. So the vine charcoal is actually made from grape vines that have been baked in a kiln. And that makes them a little bit lighter, softer. Um, this is a much less permanent medium. And so I use this initially. And then with the compressed charcoal, you can see as I lay it down, it's much darker. Um, and it's softer. And there's often a, a kind of a subtle difference in temperature. The compressed charcoal can sometimes be a little bit warmer. Um, and, and that actually can provide some really nice contrast in this. Um, so the, initially though, I'm just using the vine charcoal. And you can see as I lay down a value here and I smudge it around, it really picks up a lot. So it's, it's, built, it's about building up these layers and layers of charcoal. Uh, and what I'm doing at this stage too is I'm trying to think about the darks all as a single shape. I, I kind of initially thought through some proportions there just to kind of get a sense for how I want to place it on the page. But now what I'm trying to do is unify the darks and then they get broken up by these three main sections of light that I'll, I'll let remain kind of the, the, the blank page. And that's where we'll add the charcoal, uh, the white charcoal to it. So for now though, it's just about building up these values in that dark area and then from there, we'll start to differentiate the forms. So push that background back um, and render the uh, render Odin here on top. So building up layers using the side of my hand. If you're following along with charcoal and you're a little um, kind of sensory defensive about the material, that's totally understandable. Uh, some people have a you know, hard time getting used to working with charcoal. I love it. I love the way it just moves around the page and I love that it's being picked up on my hands here so I can use it as a drawing tool. Here you can see my, my fingerprints. That's what happens. Um, it, it, that's happening because of the oils on the fingertips. Um, and I've talked about that in the past. That's why I typically use the side of my hand. And what I, I must have touched this part of the page with my oily fingers and it left some marks. So it's just something to kind of be aware of. In a drawing like this, I'm not as concerned about it. This is all about an exercise. Um, and so we'll, I just did that again. I use my fingers. But just something to be aware of. I, you know, I, you just kind of roll with it if you're, um, if you found that you've done something like that. I'm going to use my eraser just to kind of think through this basic shape of the light on the top of his head. Trying to visualize the basic spacing of the ears there. I welcome everybody again. If you're joining late, um, if you're able to join the, you know, in the recording once it's gone live, if you want to use um, that chat field, the comments section under the, under the recording. Um, to post some of your suggestions. I'd love to hear some ideas. Uh, I'm starting to, starting to work through the, uh, the, the drawings for next week as well. So I'm going to think through the basic shape of the ears. So what I'm looking at is, a, is looking at this basic angle. Um, and Again, one of the things we talk a lot about in this series is using comparative measuring and angle sighting. So angle sighting is taking a look at the angle of an object and transferring that over to the drawing. Uh, to, um, and then what that does is it establishes the basic path. And once I have that angle established, I need to determine, well, how long does that need to be? But it all starts with first determining what those angles are. And it's helpful to have just some initial um, initial uh, kind of marks on the page is with marks on the page you have something very concrete that you can react to and you can make specific decisions about what needs to change, what needs to move. Um, so as I'm looking at this I want to make sure I get the spacing of the ears right and I can use um, some kind of key points as, as measuring tools. So I can take a look at the spacing between the ends here of the ears, compare that to the spacing between them and it looks like it's pretty much equidistant. So if I were to if I were able to copy and paste another ear, it would fit almost perfectly between these two. And so that's, that's kind of a helpful tool, and I feel like I'm generally in the right area then. Uh, I don't want to make these any wider, and I think the spacing generally works out all right. This is all very soft charcoal, and I know it's going to kind of disappear as we go, but it's helping me to, to provide some basic notes. 
Now, the thing that I also need to look at is that, that basic angle between them. There's a bit of a slope to the head. So as I, as I look at the angle between these two spots, I can angle sight there. And I can also do that um, across the top point of the ears. And give myself just kind of a rough, a rough kind of guideline. You know, there's a bit of an upward slope here, and this point might need to come up a little bit. And we'll continually adjust as we go. I've got those angles already established that I want to translate onto the page. If I don't like a line, what's nice about the vine charcoal, you can just wipe it right out. If you're following along and you have graphite, um, if you're able to carve away the core of the pencil, like I've done here with this charcoal, and expose more of the uh, more of the lead there, that'll allow you to create kind of a wash across the page that gives you a similar effect to this. If you have it kind of sharpened down to a fine point, that might be a challenge for you overall. So now I want to do some kind of angle sighting. I'm using some of these kind of metrics. So if I draw a vertical line down from this point, the ear, and a vertical line down here, I can look at it relative to Odin here. And so I know the like the, this corner of the eye aligns with this uh, left side of this dark spot here. Uh, but I need to figure out how far down to go, and one way to do that is to look for this angle across here and transfer that across. And so then the eye is going to fall somewhere right in here. So that also helps to establish the axis for the eye, because there is a kind of a slight curve to the head here. And I can do that down here as well. So if locating the, the eyes here. Kind of just roughing those in right now. looking for that axis, and if I run this axis through, it kind of cuts through this part of the ear. And when you, when, if you're doing this technique of bringing the reference photo in on top and then moving it away, um, be sure that you're aligning the page per, uh, parallel and perpendicular to this page here. So it should be aligned with your drawing paper as well. If you rotate it, that's going to mess with it. So just be careful of that. Um, so I know the eye kind of falls generally in along here. Just giving myself some notes. And the nose is really subtle. And if I look at the spacing, if I look at the spacing down from the ears to the mouth, I can compare that to some of the other parts of the, of the drawing. And it's generally about, about the width of the ear, maybe a little bit shorter. And he's got a slight turn to his head, so the nose comes off to the right a little bit. So that helps to create some sort of basic orientation, and this is all going to disappear again. Again, drawing is about building up, taking it down, building it up, and gradually allowing the image to emerge. Now, feeling happy with the value across that back, I'm going to make this front area significantly darker. And I just want to kind of create a soft transition along in here. Not really thinking too much about the general shape, but I'm trying to, to leave some of that area soft. So you're just using the kneaded eraser. Um, just so that I, I'm keeping aware of that, since that's going to be ultimately the, the focal point, I think, of the drawing, is that halo of light. Um, I want to make sure that that becomes a prominent shape here. And then under here, we know this to be white fur, but it's noticeably darker because it's in shadow than what we see over here. So I'm letting that, that tone kind of build up and just using the charcoal that's already built up on my hands to, to do that. All right. Now, what I think I want to do is, is kind of work my way down from the top down because I know that as I work on this ear, I'm probably going to just be smudging this out. Um, so I'll work from that top down and then get to this a bit later. Uh, I think what I would like, I think what makes most sense right now is to utilize the, a compressed charcoal pencil 
to start to make more permanent marks. And you're going to find that it, with a layer of vine charcoal underneath, it starts to kind of scrape away that vine charcoal, which that's, ter that's totally fine. And the compressed charcoal becomes a bit more permanent. Now you see it, there's a, a kind of a, a, a translucency to the light here that we'll capture, but if you squint your eyes at the photo, that really disappears. So what it tells me is that the, the value of that light is still relatively dark. I want that to really fall into that shadow in the ear. So it's a bit more subtle than I might naturally think of. So I'm just gonna check the chat field real quickly here. I see Kat's comment there. I hope to see that out there. Hello, everybody. All right, getting back at it. Okay, uh, now we notice that there's that fur kind of right in this area here, and that's all very soft. And I'm not gonna worry about any of that detail. What's really important is, is, about, is to create that kind of soft transition. So if you see that I'm holding my pencil way back, um, utilizing the side of it as much as possible, and here I notice a there's a there's something kind of caught in that uh, caught in the end here. It's kind of fraying. So I'm going to grab some I have some sandpaper here. Let me just file that down. I can feel it scratching on the uh, on the paper. So I don't know if that's just a an imperfection in the charcoal. Look, that got rid of it. But that can sometimes happen. You know, we're dealing with burnt pieces of wood, um, and so sometimes there can be little, uh, some imperfection is in, in there. Uh, there we go. So what I could do is I could feel that kind of scratching on the surface uh, and kind of messing with things a little bit. So in terms of creating this, I just want there to be a soft transition. And so I'm gonna just build up gradual layers of, of charcoal. And I'm not worried about any of these edges being sharp. You can even see in the reference photo, there's a subtle halo around there. It's much softer than we, um, we might initially see. And what's gonna be really interesting about that is that if we allow everything else in the drawing to be soft, we can use selective focus to bring our attention into specific areas. So for example, the eyes are pretty dynamic with those bright blue, um, eyes there so we can draw more attention to those by making those in sharp focus and let everything everything else become softer and more atmospheric so I'm trying to just think through the general shape of that fur that wraps it over and up into the ear and then darken the areas around it letting a bit of that light show through here so there's a kind of a ring of light and there's a natural kind of directionality with some of the hair in there, but I'm not, not thinking about hair. If you let your eyes remain soft and out of focus, um, you can really kind of lock onto the, uh, the, the, the values more effectively. And then in looking at the shape of the ears, be careful not to make them too symmetrical. Um, you know, I feel like that's what I'm doing here. This is too much of a, of a perfectly round shape. Um, I need to be looking at, at breaking it apart into more distinct sections here. There's an irregularity to that curve. Um, and I can notice that, for example, it's a little bit flatter here on the top, then rounds down and then really starts to straighten out. So um, something to be kind of be aware of. And I'm trying to think about it in terms of shape rather than line as much as possible. And keep stepping back. So I have the, the image that I'm drawing is projected on the screen in front of me, and that allows me to kind of step back from it a little bit and see it more directly. So you know, you notice there's these hairs kind of crossing over here. Don't worry about that. We're gonna come back to that later and create some of that texture. There's, uh, I can, feel myself becoming intimidated by some of those details and I'm going to use my my own teacher voice on myself and say ignore them 
<laughs> Don't get sucked into that right now. That comes at the end. I need to build that foundation. So, um, all right. I'm just going to kind of block in some of the values. And we see kind of a distinct dark shape in here. There's a large shadow shape. And then there's a smaller, kind of darker shadow shape that we're going to work on. So we'll work on that bigger shadow shape for now. Just laying in, uh, just laying in that value, just laying in charcoal. And building up those values gradually. Um, now, I, I can see the texture of the paper coming through, and I'm not really worried about that yet, because I know once I bring in those shading stumps, it's going to help to get rid of that. And now we can start to see that there's kind of a specific form to um, this darker shadow shape. And I can start to indicate that. Just trying to think through the path as much as possible, but I don't want there to be a hard line. And don't be afraid to go too dark, especially in these early stages. Um, you know, before we, I mean, this is, this is dark here, but it's certainly not close to black. Um, and so we're still kind of calibrating our values a bit. And don't be afraid to go too dark in this shadow area. Because if anything, if you over-exaggerate the value in this, in this area here, it's just going to make that highlight pop later on. And one of the things uh, you know, I noticed when I, I did a kind of a preparatory sketch of this, one of the things that I found really kind of interesting as I was working on it is that, again, my eyes were calibrating to the values here and starting to interpret this as white when it, it's not. Um, and then when I added that, that white and on top of it, it really kind of created this strong sense of light. Um, and so in the case of this drawing, um, just know that you know, you just kind of trust these initial values. Don't worry about getting too dark with these. So again, using the side of my pencil, I've got it sharpened on, on this end as well for when I need details, but for now, I have all this, this, this charcoal kind of exposed on the end. And I can subtly see some of the marks that I have, but I'm trying to think about it in terms of shape, not line. Again, soft transitions around all of these forms, and we're going to bring in the details later. I'm going to smudge this out, build up the value. Let it just stay soft. And so now we're starting to get kind of that mid-tone value, and we're going to go even darker here. So what I think we might do now is let's bring in Let's bring in the shading stump and start to add another level of specificity to this as we start to refine the form. Again, trying not to add detail. When I talk about specificity, it's not about the detail, but about the overall form and correcting those forms. And that, that little bit of halo around there, I'm not going to worry about it at this point. I'll come back in and and adjust that a little bit later. And pulling these marks in with a shading stump, in from the edge. These aren't quite the right values, but I'll get in there with the, some of the darker values a little bit later. Start to suggest kind of the flow of the texture. All right, everybody. Yeah, so Cynthia is asking about the paper. Yeah, this is toned drawing paper. Let me see if I can find some. Oh, here it is. What do I have? This is a Strathmore paper. Let me show it to you. So it's this Strathmore toned paper. Um, it seems to be working out just fine for, for what we need. Um, it seems to accept the charcoal quite nicely. And it's relatively smooth, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. This is an 11 by 14. I'm just double checking the overall shapes. And right now it looks like, you know, it's he's in this fog of kind of this dreamlike fog in a way, which is kind of cool. And I think that's going to serve us well. We I think the atmosphere in this is going to be great. All right. Um 
So also without vine charcoal, will it work okay to use charcoal pencil? Yes. Yeah, I think the, the charcoal pencil will be a little bit more permanent. It's gonna grab the surface a bit more. And this is why I kind of like often just laying a, a layer of vine charcoal on there first because it, it allows the, the compressed charcoal to kind of float off the surface a little bit more. Um, but if you don't have it, you know, I think you'll be all right. Just build up slow layers of it, um, of the compressed charcoal pencil. And I've kind of lost that form there. Just kind of just erasing out this area where that, that light is going to be helping to see that overall shape. And I think I want to actually build up more tone down in here using the vine charcoal. Really kind of increase that contrast. Oh, excuse me. Got too many things on my drawing board here, so. All right, so just kind of thinking, getting back into this section here thinking about refining the forms, kind of checking it out. Um, you know, there, what's nice about working with a subject like this too is that you can be off a little bit, um, you know, get the basic, you know, get the basic proportions right. And, but what's really kind of most critical, I think, is getting the axes right. So getting the ears, like there's a slight angle to these, getting that angle right is gonna be more important than getting the specific shape of the ears right. So double check that. Um, I, know, I noticed for me in that preparatory drawing that I did, the angle of the eyes was off a little bit. Um, I kind of lost sight of that as I was getting into the details. So just keep double checking those. All right, so just kind of refining those shapes. I don't like that this ear is still too, too rounded. Um, it feels less specific. So I'm gonna try to find that specific angle a little bit better. There we go. I think yeah, I think I need to cut this down a little bit. There we go. Bring this darkened up area up here a little bit. So get that angle in there. That's what I'm looking for. And I smooth this all out. And I think, you know, in these areas where that you get those fuzzies coming over the ears, I'm gonna come back to that and erase that out. But I think that the basic value is looking good. As I'm softening this, I'm thinking about the flow of the fur. It almost kind of radiates out from the center. Um, I th so Pamela is asking a really good question about the angle of the, the surface. So for the purposes of this drawing, I'm going to working on this inclined plane um, and it's, it just allows me to get the camera angles that I want. Um, what would be ideal is actually working on a vertical surface. Um, working on a flat surface has its, has its challenges because you then as the viewer are looking down at it at an angle and we have a tendency to correct the perspective of that. So the drawing itself will be distorted sometimes. Um, so the way to correct that though is to continually flip it up. So if you only have a flat surface to work on, keep tipping it up and step back at it and look at it from a distance. And you want to do that regularly to continually check your proportion. You know, it's, you know, use whatever you have available to you. So now what I want to do is establish those eyes and at least get them placed properly. Um, and then I'm going to build up those values. So I'm just kind of erasing out an area for them to exist. Um, thinking about the general axis, placing them properly in the, you know, in the in relation to the ears. I gotta move this one over. So I'm giving myself kind of a field to work within. 
Um, and what's interesting is that you see there's kind of a, a larger kind of oval shape and then there's the, the eye inside of it. And so I want to kind of start to think through that this is less about making the correct marks and more about um, just kind of establishing the, the size and the placement of it. I'm going to kind of build the values around it in, in a bit. So I want to just start kind of think through that. And I want to look at this, the angle of the, the bridge there, this angle here. And so what you'll see me do a lot of is actually kind of pantomiming some of the marks. So when I'm going like this, I'm not necessarily making the, drawing the axis on there, I'm just trying to visualize it so it stays in my mind as I'm working. Uh, because, um, you know, it's easy to, easy to lose sight of that. Once I get into the details, and I stop thinking about how it fits in with the rest of the, uh, rest of the head there. Okay, and then I'm kind of working my way down, thinking through the shape and the size of things. I'm working from the photograph more than the, the, draw, the, the projection, the, the digital image. You may find it more effective to work from the digital image. It's going to be a little bit more effective in terms of seeing those details. Sometimes, depending on the printer, we might lose sight of some of that. So as I'm looking at the nose here, I'm still trying to think about it in terms of shape. I'm trying not to think about nose um, and kind of a preconceived notion of how to draw a cat's nose. Um, just, and double checking those proportions of the eyes here. And it might be helpful because I'm, I'm looking at it in the screen in front of me, so it's a little bit smaller. So it's similar to stepping back. And I feel like that's generally good. I'm going to have to do some refining there. But before I do that, I want to build up some additional value here. Okay, Prani is asking a good question about I'm not using dark uh, toned paper, so how do I make the highlights? and I don't have charcoal to make the background. Um, you know, that's gonna be di difficult, so whatever material you've got, even if you just have graphite, um, you try to simulate the shape. You could see this background shape here, um, and that would be left the white of the page, and what you might find actually effective is just to tone the whole page with, with graphite. Um, so just kind of, again, using the side of your pencil, kind of fill that in as much as possible, um, and then erase out these highlight shapes, and that's gonna help you to create that sense of light and value. You know, and if you don't really have the materials that are gonna lead you to creating that sense of light, then um, use that opportunity to just to kind of really focus on building proportions. Um, so maybe you render this whole thing in line um, and, and you focus on getting the angles right, getting the proportions right, um, and not necessarily about the light and shadow. And then when you, if you do get the, the compressed charcoal, um, maybe then it becomes more uh, useful to then focus on the, uh, you know, focus on the, the light and shadow there, if that makes sense. So this is the compressed charcoal stick. It's not ideal for details, so I'm not thinking about it in terms of detail. Um, and it, there's there's a I, what I've noticed about these sticks is that there can almost, it almost feels like there's some sort of film or something protecting it on the outside that you have to kind of bust through. And then the inner core is just a soft, warm, really nice um, charcoal. And so I'm just trying to build up some of these values, laying it down here, kind of working around the eyes, but I'm gonna refine those a little bit more. And I'm thinking about that kind of the darker shape within that larger shadow shape now. And you're gonna find a big difference in the various brands. I think this is a Richeson brand uh, compressed charcoal, uh, which I find uh, quite effective. Um, you know, some are just warmer, some are cooler, some are harder, some are softer. 
Um, and, and I think it's healthy to experiment with them as much as possible. Uh, now in this area, there's kind of a soft transition between the kind of the darker area and then where it gets a little bit lighter in this lighter gray area. So I'm going to keep my marks light and loose. Um, similar technique to when I'm working with the charcoal pencil where it's just about util utilizing the weight of the material on the surface. I don't have to press down very hard at all. Kind of sneaking up on the values. Trying to think about the overall shape. So as I'm as I'm looking for some of these shapes, I'm just kind of always double checking to see am I in the right spot? There's a bit of a kind of a harder edge here along the nose. And I'm, again, just building up values. And I'll refine the eyes a little bit, actually soften that. You can see how soft everything is looking. And it feels like the camera's out of focus, but I promise you it's not. <laughs> so, um, it, it is in sharp focus, but that's the way I feel like it's really ultimately most effective in terms of creating a unified um, the drawing here. We want everything to feel like it's all part of the same drawing. And then maybe coming in here, laying down a little bit of charcoal to darken it along the in the ears. There's this, I find that this compressed charcoal stick that I've got is actually um, darker than the, I've got a 4B and then is this this 4B as well? I can't tell you. Or I, this one I actually sharpened over the uh, over it, but I think they're both four B, and this is a, this is equivalent to like a six or an eight B in terms of softness. So it's really going to be dark. But that's going to once we get that those highlights in there, man, it's going to pop. But intentionally keeping this kind of soft and light at this point. Keep, trying to keep things varied, you know, it's one of the things we've talked a lot about in this series in terms of edge quality is you're, you want to constantly vary the edge. So at every, every inch along the, the contour of an, <clears throat> of an object, there should be a, a change in value, um, you know, hardness, softness, color. You know, if, you're, if we're working in color, then there, there could be a change in color. But you want to think about always changing, always evolving along those edges. All right, so now what I think I want to do is I'm I, <laughs> like what's, what's being, I'm being pulled to do right now are the eyes, and I'm trying to delay that gratification a little bit. Um, what I want to do is use my eraser now to start to suggest some of the light in that hair that's kind of catching on there. So with the kneaded eraser, it's just these, I'm just pinching it into this, um, kind of fine point that I can then use to suggest the hair. And it's not about getting each and every strand in there. It's about kind of simulating the texture and really trying to look at the general shape. So I'm still allowing my eyes to stay out of focus, and but I'm observing how it's a little bit lighter here than it is down in here. And so I'm just trying to think through that a little bit and suggesting some of that, that texture. And here we can do that as well. That light coming off the top of the head and kind of spilling down on top and then there's a change in um, the coloring. So just tapping along and breaking up those forms that's going to ultimately simulate the texture more effectively. And then here there's a little bit lighter section of fur, thinking about the general flow of that. Uh, so just a light pressure. I'm thinking about drawing with this material. I'm, I, like Again, erasers not, aren't always just about correcting. You're always drawing. You're always contributing to the form in some way is the, the way I find it most helpful to think about the materials.
So uh, some of this is just about kind of being confident in your mark and just committing to it. And if it doesn't work, you can you can smudge it back out, right? You know, so there's you can always fix it. Um, there are some great artists, you know, over time that you know they'll you know they never give up on the drawing, and you know sometimes it's, it's they'll they'll race until they bear through the paper, and then they put another piece of paper either behind it or on top of it, and they just keep going. Um, that that gets really kind of exciting. That's when. Uh, that's when the drawing, the act of drawing becomes really powerful. I'm just gonna make sure that I leave some of these areas kind of light where I know I wanna put that the charcoal. Another nice thing about the the the, 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 uh, the kneaded eraser here is that it, uh, you know, because you can shape it, it creates these wonderful irregular forms that simulate the texture. And so it's not about looking at each and every strand on there and getting it right. It's kind of looking at the values and trying to simulate it. Um, kind of doing some negative drawing in here, uh, kind of pulling out some of the lighter areas under the mouth. I'm gonna get back into that a little bit later. All right. So, yes, Linda, you're talking about using the squared um, compressed charcoal. Yeah, that, that can also kind of work. It, it, sometimes it, that edge can be a little too harsh, um, but I think you're exactly right. Just continue to, to kind of work it down. And if you have a piece of sandpaper, that might be most effective. All right. So I think what I would like to do now is get in here with the eyes and add a little bit of specificity. And what I'm doing here is I'm establishing this as an anchor. I just said eyes and here you're like, um, why am I working on the ears? This is, what I'm doing here is I'm, I am thinking about the eyes. I'm gonna use this part as a landmark. And so I need to make sure that that's correct before I uh, get too far along with the eyes. So I'm just looking at that and I'm measuring down with a plumb line to get a sense for where that eye should be. And then this becomes another anchor as well. So whenever, whenever you're drawing, it's all about um, kind of triangulating and being aware of where things are in the system. So because, again, because these are anchors, I need to get those locked down. So I'm looking here, going to kind of sneak up on the eyes a little bit. Kind of work my way from the outer edges and in, in, into the find the form. And there's a general flow to the fur that I can simulate with the direction of my marks. So what I'm trying to do is be aware of all of it at once. So I'm working in this area, but I'm thinking about this shape. There's a little bit of kind of lightness down in this form that I need to just kind of tap out with a kneaded eraser. And that's now it's a little too bright. I can knock that down, but I've corrected the form. And then I'm thinking about this kind of dark edge along in here that there's a kind of an outer shape and then an inner shape of the eye. So I'm just working on that, that inner shape. Again, you can start to see if you're if you have the printout in front of you, you can see kind of the grain of the fur a little bit. Um, so I'm allowing my marks to follow along that. Thinking about that path, making sure it's correct. And then double checking here. It's hard because it feels so bright on this page. I'm wondering if I've um, if I've made it too large. So what I need to do is I need to look at this space here. So if I take this distance and I carry it down, the distance from these between these two dark spots is about the same as the distance between that dark spot and the lower portion of the eye. So let's see how 
That's pretty close, uh, but I think I can drop this down a little bit more. That feels a little bit better to me right now. Yeah, Mary, <laughs> he does look scary right now. And yeah, it kind of looks like a ghost cat. And that's that's great. Um, that's what you kind of want because you it's all about building the whole thing up. Um, you know, I've used this analogy in early drawing sessions, but when we think about the word draw, um, uh, yeah, I love to have my students in, on the first day of class really kind of kind of consider that and how we utilize that in other aspects of our life. What, is, what else does that mean? And, you know, in addition to drawing a picture, we often refer to drawing in the way in which we're, we're pulling something out or we're bringing things together. So I think about, um, you know, how we use the term, you know, to draw names from a hat or water from a well. It's about pulling something out. Um, the you know, or we're drawing together, it's about pulling together. And I like to think about that while I'm working as well, is, is that the, the image is emerging and I'm trying to pull it out on the page. You know, similar to that famous quote by Michelangelo that the, the, the figure is already in the stone and his job is to release it, right? Um, and there we, if we take that similar mindset to drawing, we can say the image is already there, we're exposing it, we're pulling it out of what's in front of us. Um, we're pulling it out of our minds and allowing it to emerge. And so at this stage, yeah, it looks creepy and ghost-like, um, but I find that, I think that's gonna be healthy. There's a general axis to this that I want, general axis. How does that look? I feel like that works out okay. Thinking about that negative space around the eye. Kind of working my way, way into it. Again, I have to, I'm continually working back and forth between the eye and the ear because this, these dark regions here in the ears are my anchor points. So I just want to, I need to make sure that they're correct. And then here with using kind of the, the side of the pencil, there's kind of a sharp ridge and it's starting to actually do some negative drawing and simulate the hair that's coming out of there. Um, but it's all coming about because I'm actually trying to draw the eye and I need that as a landmark because that wasn't fully placed. I couldn't quite use it effectively. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so Heather is asking, what can you do if the charcoal marks you need to correct will not lift completely with a needed eraser, especially after using the blending stumps? Yeah, that's um, that's a tricky thing. If you have a rubber eraser, that might help. Um, you might try actually, if you have a, a light sandpaper, see if that works to actually kind of file down that top layer of the paper. Um, but that that is an indication to me of the paper itself. And it's healthy to experiment with different types of paper. Um, so if you have like a cotton rag drawing paper, I think you'll find that it's going to lift uh, differently. And now in this pa this paper seems to be lifting off the marks pretty effectively. But like I said, that's an indication uh, more of the paper than anything. Okay. So let me I feel like, yeah, the, the eyes are really kind of creepy right now. So I'm gonna soften these down, make sure that they stay in shadow and start to refine it. Now really look critically at the shapes that you see. There's a kind of a dark ridge, ridge along here. There's kind of both a rounded and a kind of a squared quality to it. And you wanna be careful not to draw a dark line all the way around it. There are just these few areas where that line becomes more visible. There's a bit of a shadow uh, on at, around the top here. 
And then the pupils are these kind of vertical forms. So I'm actually going to create that using these soft kind of circular marks because it's not a hard edge. It is all very kind of soft and atmospheric. It gets a little bit darker up here at the top. So I need to be kind of sensitive to it. I'm just looking constantly back and forth between my drawing and the reference. Okay. I haven't switched to the sharp end of my pencil here yet. I don't think I really need to. So same across here, a little bit darker on the top. And you remember these, the eyeballs are, are spherical. They're rounded and you can start to see kind of a rounded quality in the pupils here as well. Look how soft in the reference photo, how soft it gets down at the bottom. It's a little bit more visible and sharper at the top. And place that too far over. So I'm going to move that more centrally. So in that case, because I drew the pupil too far off to the left, rather than erase it and try it again, I wanted to leave the old one in there so that I don't replicate that same mistake. Um, and ended up putting it back in the exact same spot that I had just erased down. And so um, sometimes it's helpful to leave the mistakes on there, or the, you know, the incorrect form on there. Uh, okay, just thinking about, there's a little bit, it's a little bit brighter on the, on this eye on the right, his left eye. So I'm going to use the eraser to kind of lift up some of that. and kind of correct the form, check it out from a distance. And this is where, let me see, I feel like that, that works out all right. If, if you're looking at this, if, if you want to comment down here, if the eyes are looking like they're kind of tilted or skewed, if one needs to come up or down, I feel like it looks pretty good. Um, but you all have done a really effective job at helping to point out areas that I need to improve on, some places where the, the proportions might be off. So I, I encourage you to continually do that. Feedback is really important. It's an important part of the process. Um, you know, and when we take a live class, um, we would do that in, you know, class critiques. We have these group critiques where you can say, you tell the class, you know, this is what was working, this is where I'm struggling, what do you see in this? And then you can decide for yourself, is that what you intended? Or does it need, do you need to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and, and try again? I think I made those pupils a little too large, so I'm just trying to be really subtle with the needed eraser. Um, so it's, what I've done is I've kind of it's kind of got a point to it, but there's a rounded quality to it, and that allows me to, to be a little bit less precise. Um, and now, actually, if I use my shading stump, this is where I can start to create some of that kind of glassy look as I smooth it out. And I'm, you can notice that I haven't really utilized the shading stump much in this, but this will hopefully help to create uh, some of that contrast by allowing just some of these fine areas to be smoother. And maybe I'll just let the rest of the drawing stay rough and show the texture of the paper. All right. All right, Wilma said, you step back about 10 feet from the computer screen. All right, I'm glad that you can see. That's actually a good point there. Um, that's something that I would 
it kind of that was a te that would be a test that I always kind of give myself when I'm working, especially when I'm working on plein air, when I'm outside painting. Um, as I work, I'll put it up. I'll, I'll step back as far as I can go until it's you know sometimes almost invisible, and then I'll gradually walk up to it. And if it holds up, if I can recognize it and understand the space and the form at pretty much any distance, then I know I've got something. Um, what can be challenging though is sometimes we'll have a drawing that works great from up close. And as soon as we step back, everything just gets flat and gets lost. And so kind of checking that can be really helpful. And then sometimes um, the, the drawing or the painting won't work it well at all up close. It'll just look like a hot mess. And then you step back and it all just comes together. And to me, that gets really exciting and I'll often kind of go for that effect. And, um, you know, where it, at a distance it might look like a photograph up close, it just looks like a jumble of marks. Um, and to me that is, is more exciting than having something that looks great up close, um, but just kind of falls apart of it at a distance. So now I'm starting to think through some basic texture, just using my, you know, my shading stump there, but I'm not trying to blend it. I'm just trying to give some directionality to the marks here. Uh, and use it to, to actually lay down some kind of some details in there. So you can see just kind of tapping it on there, some of these, some of that charcoal is coming off. And it, and if, when, we, when we look at some of these shapes in here where we see a, a contrast in light and dark, you see these kind of wedges forming. I can start to pull out some, some of the lighter value and this is all st still staying in shadow. <laughs> T. Gilbert, the eyes are perfect. Well played. Thank you for the feedback. Um, is anybody else having trouble with, with the audio? I'm looking at my levels here and they all look good. So um, if it's something else that I can look into, just let me know. I've got my, my mic here. So now you're just using that kneaded eraser to start to refine the form. Um, and here actually I can, I can use my shading stump to lay down some of these dark areas to suggest the mouth. And now you can see that I can, I can create that just by a few kind of quick taps on there. So it's not a hard and harsh line. It's just a kind of a general shape. I kind of missed that a little bit. So you have a bit of a lightness on either side there. Then we come up into the nostrils and you can see like the nose is a little bit lighter and then it gets darker around it. And so let me see if, let me see if this pencil will actually get me the values I need. Bearing down, but I'm trying to think about the grain of the fur. And I'm, I'm thinking about lifting the marks as I go. So it's, it's coming up on both ends of the mark. Uh, so it, and that helps to create kind of a softer transition. I'm gonna increase that, that contrast there. So then as we come up, we see the kind of that center line of the nose, we see a darker nostril, kind of wrapping around, it gets a little bit darker right up in here, so trying to visualize that path and then run my marks leading up right to that path rather than drawing the line. Actually, I'm going to go back in with this. I this because this compressed charcoal is just so much softer and darker than what I'm getting with that charcoal pencil. And I think I, I really need that, especially right here, to help create some depth to pull that nose out. There's not a lot of depth in this, 
but there is form. You know, he's, he's not a, a wall here of fur, although he is quite fluffy. This cat has the coolest meow ever. It's a very restrained squeak. Pretty fun cat. All right, so this starts to simulate the fur. And what actually, what's kind of cool is happening is, I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but there's a, there are layers underneath where that, that charcoal pencil is a little bit harder and it's actually embossing on the page. It's creating these fine ridges. And as I scrape over this with the compressed charcoal, it's creating this kind of rubbing that's naturally then uh, allowing those, those scratch marks underneath it to show up, which is really kind of fascinating. I'll use it. Looking for some variation in that fur. So just, I'm really, I don't want there to be hard lines in this. I want this to be soft. So I'm just kind of flicking this charcoal. Um, let me see, I think down in here, I need to lay down a bit more charcoal. It gets a little bit softer. Um, I want to start, I don't, I think I want to let this be generally soft as well, but it, there needs to be some sort of information. So I'm trying to think through some of these shapes down in this area. These circular marks when I'm shading will be helpful. So just laying some of this charcoal down to create some of this more kind of specific modeled form. That's not really doing it. I don't want to be wasting my, not wasting my time, but spending all my time down here and I can let this be soft. There, the vine charcoal did it quickly. I don't want there to be much detail down in, in this lower portion, so. Um. All right, we're almost at the point where we're really gonna get into that detail. Um, now watch what we can do with the kneaded eraser here. Um, there's, there's this uh, kind of modeled form here in that shadow that we can bring out. So I'm just kind of shaping the, the kneaded eraser into this, I'm just kind of moving it around into this kind of rough, irregular form. And as I roll it across the surface here, I'm just thinking about the flow of the fur rather than to replicate each and in every individual kind of hair. I'm just allowing the, the uh, kneaded eraser to kind of skip across the surface and kind of transferring my awareness of the flow of that fur onto uh, onto the paper here. So you can see that it's just creating some subtle suggestions of light and shadow. That's what I love about the kneaded eraser. You can do things too if you want a very specific texture. You can press this into something. Like, like a, a, the wall behind me has a soft kind of texture to it. And, um, and that can be an effective way to actually simulate a very specific texture there. Put that back up. So I'm trying, but I'm trying to move the eraser following the, the kind of the flow of that fur. Softening in some areas here. Actually, what I might want to do is darken this background a little bit. And now with all of these layers of that vine charcoal, each layer just gets softer and smoother and more kind of velvety there. And so that initial pass that you might have made with the vine charcoal might have looked kind of harsh. But with those multi, you know, subsequent layers on top of it, you know, it starts to really get kind of smooth and subtle. All right, let's see, what do we wanna do here? I think I actually wanna darken this along in here. This is gonna be a bit of a focal point right here at the top. So if I darken in 
that space up here. I'm not worried about that form because I'm going to erase this back out. So this is just a series of short vertical marks following along that path rather than a line this way. And that'll keep that edge a little bit softer. And there's kind of a subtle drop down there. Here I'm just shaping it into this, this kind of wedge, thinking about the flow of that fur. But hopefully this is illustrating that, that idea of building this whole thing up at a time. So oh Barb, uh, Mary, so Mary, keep trying, but nothing seems to be working. I'm sorry to hear that. I see a bunch of comments here, but uh not able to keep track of them all. So okay. Let's see. I think what I want to do now is to start to kind of replicate some of the, the finer detail in here. Um, and so I've got this sharpened pencil here. Rather than draw with a tripod grip like this, I'm going to keep it on its side. You know, that, that edge of the pencil, if I give a light touch to it, it's going to make a fine line and maintain the point. and it'll be ultimately more effective than trying to utilize the point. And it makes these marks a little bit softer on the page. So I'm just trying to think through the kind of the flow of the fur a little bit. Again, not, it's not about replicating every single strand, I'm trying to think through the general flow. And I think I need a little bit more variety along the ear, a little bit sharper in some areas along that edge, a little bit softer in others, but still utilizing the side of my pencil. And then doing kind of some negative drawing here by kind of pushing down into that fur. Um, in here. But I find that this this technique, this way of holding it, almost it's almost like holding chopsticks, right? It's rather than a grip like this, I find this gives me a little bit more freedom to move. So I, I can push and pull the the pencil and engage the tip or the, the um, or the, the side of it more effectively. It's a bit more universal. So, you know, find the grip that works for you. This may just not work for you. But what, what can sometimes happen is we get, um, we just get accustomed to, to utilizing it in one way, especially if, um, if you're new to drawing and um, you spend more time writing. You know, we have a lot of manual dexterity built up in that tripod grip that we use for writing. And it can be a really hard habit to break, but I promise you, if you spend some time to, to play around with different grips, it will um, it will serve you in the end. So, all right. I think what I want to do is just kind of lightly tap along the edge of the ears to suggest that that kind of halo of light. Let me kind of darken this, just smooth this out a little bit. kind of tap along there in certain areas. And then I think I need to kind of reestablish this a little bit more. I'm going to establish this, this front edge a bit more than maybe the back edge. And then I can use my eraser to kind of suggest the light coming off of here that will reinforce with the white chalk in a little bit. All right. So 
So I'm just kind of having some fun with the, the patterning of his colors there. You know, they don't, it doesn't match one-to-one -one with what I'm seeing in the photograph, but that's all right. How are we doing on time? We're about a little over an hour, hour and 10 minutes, so that's good. All right, so I think we're gonna get into drawing with the white, uh, the white uh, charcoal now. Um, so just checking here real quick. Uh, Cindy, uh, you have some, you need some help with the nose. Are you seeing something on here that needs correcting? Um, it's all very subtle. Try to suggest it as much as possible, but you see this kind of T shape here that's a little bit lighter and then it's darker all the way around it. That might be helpful. Keep it subtle. Well, am I having trouble drawing ellipses? That can be a challenge uh, as well. That's a really good exercise to kind of practice um, it, it, just on a separate piece of paper, just drawing ellipses. So now what I'm doing with the, the white chalk is I'm kind of working my way around. I have this really sharp point on, on either end. But I'm going to build up those values similarly to how I was working with the, the black charcoal. I want to create the, the kind of a sharp transition. So I'm thinking about running my marks along the kind of the flow, the grain of the fur. And where I need it to be brighter, I can bear down a little bit. But if I sneak up on those values, I think it's going to be a little bit more effective. So kind of taking one initial pass at it. Um, because it's not all just bright white. There's, especially in this area, we see it's a little bit darker and then it gets brighter down in here. So I'm just going to take an initial stab at that value first. And then I'll go back in and intensify it in some other areas. So I've got this soft edge. I don't want it to be harsh along there. So running this as a series of kind of short vertical marks to help simulate the the texture. And I can actually suggest some of the light coming around his ear. Right here, you can see I'm kind of rolling it. It's picking up some of the charcoal as I go. So as I, as I roll the, the charcoal in my fingers, then it starts to pick up more, uh, you know, it starts to kind of file away the, the charcoal there. So utilizing the side. Kind of pushing and pulling so I get these sharp edges on either end so that when I pull it into this area it starts to blend with that shadow. When I push this way it starts to um, kind of overlap with that background. Washing in that area. Now I'm going to pull in some of that, that texture. And I can let that, that edge kind of be soft in there. We can start to see that light really popping off now. And I want to be careful about adding any white into this area. I do need to soften this. So this is all about pressure control then in this area. Um, I need to go grab another shading stump if I were to use a shading stump for this area. But now I've got this kind of first pass at that light. And as I mentioned earlier, it gets brighter down in this area. So now I can go back through and kind of push down even harder, trying to observe these kind of clumps of fur. And then it softly kind of transitions into the shadow down in here. 
So I can let that happen as well. And then up here in the, in the top, there's right now this is kind of a solid value, and I'm going to look for areas where it's a little bit brighter. Short vertical marks, trying to visualize the path. And trying to vary that edge. It's not a solid bar of light. That's what creates that sense of atmosphere. I really bear down on the, some of these areas, and I just want to double check the the softness. I need to make sure that there's a soft transition there. Um, Prania is asking, is a white colored pencil okay? I think so. Um, I've used white chalk, um, and I know colored pencils can uh, ha often have different binders to them. Some are wax based, some of them are more oil based. So you just, you want to kind of double check that, but I believe pretty much anything like that would work um, well with the, uh, with the charcoal. So now what I'm doing, like up here, I notice a little bit more texture. So there, there are areas along the top of the head where it catches the light a little bit more. And that'll help to create that rounded quality. And now here is where I can start to add some kind of sharpness. Now I don't want this to be really bright. I don't want anything to happen in this area to be brighter than the highlight, except for maybe some of the highlights in the eyes. Um, so if I keep these marks just kind of light, what it does is it sharpens up that form a little bit um, without it being confused for being in the light side of the, the head. And it just kind of scratches and moves along and it helps to simulate that texture. So this is all about just having a subtle kind of touch to the uh, this white charcoal. Now right in here though we have these longer ear hairs and it catches the light. And you don't have to you know, necessarily connect these two together. You can just kind of pick up the light in some of this area over here and our eyes will kind of connect those together. And we see that here as well. So again, I'm still using the side of the pencil because there are these sharp ridges on it that will, are fully capable of creating these nice fine lines. And then if I constantly roll it in my fingers, then it will um, I'll always have this kind of fresh edge. So again, in here, I need to be careful not to overstate uh, the light and as it crosses over into the ears there. This is just about kind of simulating that texture. I think I want to kind of refine this form a little bit more. Now this is, this is kind of a cool thing with this white chalk here. We have the, the, the long eyebrow hairs that we can simulate. And, and the best way to do this is to kind of practice the path and then just commit to it when you're ready to do it, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I need to figure out where it's going to go, and kind of practice that motion, and then just let it go off the page where it needs to go. Here, this one, it kind of cuts through the ear here. It kind of ends up here. So I'm kind of practicing that. And when I'm ready, just go for it. And it's not exactly like what we see, but it's close enough. Um, and then here, you can actually do it in the other direction. I can practice this downward pull. And that went a little bit too far. And then there, I was rolling it in my fingers so that I always had that sharp kind of edge.
So again, trying to think through, trying to visualize it first. So if I soften around the edges at the base, then it'll anchor it to his fur a little bit more back here and allow it to kind of emerge out. That's kind of a fun thing. So um, Heather999, you're asking about blending with a soft brush. I think that's a great idea with charcoal, especially um, drawing with a brush or charcoal dust and powder could be really cool as well. Um, so now here what I'm going to do is now I want to be careful because you know, I see the, the whiskers here but they're in shadow. So if you look at the, the reference photo, if you look at the values here, they're not nearly as bright as this. So um, you know, I could kind of get away with having a pretty heavy mark with these because they kind of pull up into the light there. But down in here, I just want to be a little bit more sensitive to the pressure and be a bit more subtle. And I'm not counting each, each whisker there. I'm just feeling it out. I went, went a little bit too far. Maybe push this one. And if they're ever too bright, then I can Kind of tap them out. If they're a little darker, I can come back in and indicate, or if they're if they're too dark, I can make them a little bit stronger. And then right in this area too, I can start to kind of blend. This is all about being subtle and soft with this, but it can um, you can change the tone of the of the values a little bit more and create some more form in this area. Again, I want to be really subtle with it because I don't want it to start to read like some of the highlights. So what I'm trying to do is, with a light touch, keep the value in this area the same. Um, but I'm just kind of changing the color using the, the white chalk to my advantage. Or excuse me, the white charcoal. Um, in some of these areas, I, I you know, rather than looking directly at this, you know, I've got some of these lighter areas that I picked up with the uh, the kneaded eraser, and that's where I can target the the white um, charcoal here to simulate the fur. So again, it's not a not a one to one match for what we're seeing in the reference, but it's kind of close. And then right towards the end, we're going to add the eyes. And call it good. So again, if everybody's been watching, I would love to hear what ideas you have, what you'd like me to be drawing. So once the, once the recording goes up, if you want to put that into the chat field there, um, check out artistnetwork.com. If you go to the Drawing Together page, um, you'll see the link at the very top of the homepage there on Artist Network. There's additional resources. There's links. Each of these episodes now has its own page on Artist Network. You can go and you can add comments and upload your own image. Some people have done that already and it's been fantastic to see your work. Um, so um, I, I like to check that out if you'd like to share what you're working on. Um, so now here we go into the eye to add a little bit of focus there. Kind of sharpening up. So I'm keeping my marks really light at this point. Looking for some of those the highlights here. Using circular marks to kind of blend them a little bit, adding a little bit of kind of sharpness to the, the drawing, and that'll really pop that eye out, make it feel glassy. Here we just have that one highlight right there. So again, really soft, subtle, circular marks in this just to really just kind of blend it and change the color a little bit and just kind of sharpen up some of those edges. And that'll pull the, pull the viewer right into those eyes. So 
So with the chalk now, I'm just kind of cleaning up in certain areas, but I think largely we're done. Uh, so if you're working on this again, be careful, you know, about the values in that shadow area. What really makes this pop is that highlight back there, that, that backlight there I'm seeing. I mean, and so um, be careful and control your values um, and separate them so you have a clear shadow shape and then light shape. And I hope you all have enjoyed this. I'm going to hang out for just a little bit if anybody has any additional questions. Um, so Joan, Joan is asking, how do you make the long tip on your charcoal pencil? Um, this, this, you, so you, can, you see how short this was. Yesterday, this was a full pencil because I did a, not a very good job at sharpening this down. So this end, this was, uh, this was the top end, the back end, I kind of sharpened to a point and I was taking my razor blade and just shaving off the core and then I kept breaking the, 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 uh, the charcoal. That, that was my bad, I wasn't doing a very good job. It's really important that you have a sharp blade when you do that, otherwise it could you know, break the material. Um, and so again, I started with a full pencil yesterday <laughs> and I ended up with this. Um, so it's a matter of really being careful with it, make sure that blade is sharp um, you know, some pencils though just kind of break. So this one actually worked out really well, um, but sometimes you'll get a batch of pencils where it, it must have been put under stress or something, but um, you'll, the core will actually already be broken inside the, um, the casing, the wood casing, and there's not much you can really do about that. Um, and so, but if, you know, buying, buying some really good quality materials, they generally use kind of a better wood casing that protects the lead, and it can be easier to, to shave off a bit. So. Um, those are just kind of some pointers that I have for um, kind of sharpening your pencil if you're using a razor blade to do that the way I like to. So I actually, so this one I have just a, a small handheld sharpener that I use for this end, um, and then I use my razor blade for this and sharpened it with um, uh, sharpened it with some uh, sandpaper as well. Patty, yeah, if you get some of that white charcoal, see what happens. That, that makes it all about light. If you don't have these, these materials, and all you have is graphite pencil, then maybe just focus on proportions and focus on, um, you know, just kind of working through your kind of technique. But you're not going to really be able to create this dramatic sense of light and shadow um, with those materials. And so, it, it, you know, maybe come back to it once you've kind of purchased uh, some of those charcoals. So, all right, thank you, everybody. Let me see. Um, next, uh, the next drawing, what do I have? Uh, nitrum charcoal, um, uh, somebody's asking. Yeah, I think that nitrum uh, charcoal will work for what you, what you need. I don't really know, to know the difference if that's just a brand or, or what, but um, I think that will, uh, that'll get you. I've heard a lot of really great things about that. It's a soft material. Um, so if you are coming in late, I see some people coming in at the end, that this goes up as a recording. Um, be sure in the comments uh, of the recording, you know, I'd love to get some feedback there. Um, so post your comments there and post some ideas about what you'd like to see me draw. I'm going to keep doing this for a while. Um, the next drawing is uh, eggshells, kind of changing it up a little bit. And then next week is all animals. Um, I'm going to be doing a horse, an alpaca, and a chicken next week. So <laughs> those are going to be fun. It's nicer here in Colorado, so I've been able to get out and take some reference photos on location um, at a safe distance from other people, of course. But um, So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yes, these are charcoal pencils. So I have a question in the thread about I've got this... Um, these are 4B uh, charcoal pencils that I'm using. This is a white charcoal. I've also been using compressed charcoal quite a bit, this big block of compressed charcoal um, and some vine charcoal as well. There's a full materials list in the description, so if you need that, along with the reference photo. Bird, Betty is asking, birds with feathers. Yes, I'm going to be, well, the, the chicken, I think it's, I'm really excited about the feathers on that one, but I, I'm, I'm there with you. I'm, I would love to do like a songbird or something like that, so I'm going to check that out. Um, let's see, drapey fabric, like a shirt or a dress. I think that would also be great. I've been looking around for some samples there as well. So, hey, Betty, if you want to, um, once the video recording goes up, if you want to put that into the comment field there, that would be great, and we can get some of that discussion going in that uh, in that discussion field. So, perfect. Thank you all so much. I appreciate you taking the time. We're going to be back again. We're here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, 
go back and check. I think this is episode 20, so we've got 20 of these videos that you can go back and check out at your leisure. Um, practice this. This is all about using this time to improve our drawing skills, um, encourage one another, and uh, come out of the end of this, uh, this whole episode in a, in a better position in terms of our art. So thank you so much. I'll see you all on Friday.